Hello everybody, it's me George and today I'm going to be doing a book review on this book, The Star-Crossed Serpent by Evan John Jones and Sharni Oates, Volume 1, Origins, Evan John Jones, 1966 to 1998, The Legend of Tubal Cain. So this is a book review, but this is also a bit of a revelation, right? So you'll have to bear with me, but a bit of an interesting one nevertheless. Now, this book is basically effectively about the clan of Tubal Cain or the Robert Cochrane tradition, which was um, around 1966 had kind of begun. Um, and there was a lot of kind of backstories to it as well. Um, and the clan itself was a group of people that would call themselves traditional witches or practice a form, morally, of traditional witchcraft and still do today. Um, there is the clan of Tubal Cain and Shani Oates is, is the maid of the clan of Tubal Cain. But I have to be completely honest, okay? And before I begin this, I want to do a disclaimer. This is in no way an insult or a read to that tradition. It really is not. These are based on my true feelings and these are based on my hypothesis at the time and my thoughts now in the present, which concerns this book. So if anybody hasn't read a lot about Robert Cochran. The first instances I had in regards to kind of researching was the Robert Cochran Letters, an insight into modern traditional witchcraft, which was a series of letters that were published from um, Robert Cochran to Evan John Jones, I believe, and William Gray and various other people as well. Robert Cochran, I believe, had also put some articles in the Cauldron magazine, and some of that is in there. There is also a another book called The Roebuck and the Thicket, which I actually have, which again is all about the Cochranian witchcraft tradition. So when there was Wicca, 1966, the Cochranian tradition was kind of formed. The clan of Tubal Cain was formed. However, there was claims on older forms of praxis where that kind of originated from. And I have to be honest, I have practiced witchcraft for over 20 years. I've been practicing witchcraft in different forms since I've been 11. But the clan of Tubal Cain, as in the Robert Cochran tradition, was something that admittedly in the past I really, really struggled with. I'm going to be completely and utterly honest with you. I found it quite frustrating. Um, and there was a lot of the times where I would read things and I would be like, what the what does this mean? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. This doesn't add up. There were these numbers, there was the symbolism, there was this talk about the mysteries, and I felt like it was a constant puzzle, um, and I found it really, really frustrating in the past. I found it incredibly frustrating because there were some aspects and elements of the tradition that I just, I, I found mind-boggling. I <laughs> found really confounding, if I'm completely and utterly honest with you. Robert Cochran did like to speak in riddles, and um, it was reported that he would enjoy love to practice his grey magic, which is kind of a mix between psychology as well. Um, but there was some really kind of far out things for me at the time. And as I'm going to be honest, I found I got very frustrated and I kind of had a love-hate relationship with the clan of Tubal Cain tradition and the Robert Cochran tradition. That's not anybody that follows it, but the actual tradition itself and some of the things that I had read of the tradition, I was like, nah, that is too Gnostic for me. That is, you know, there's too many riddles, there's too many puzzles, there's too many mysteries. Like, this does not make sense to me. You have to bear in mind... I am, and I still am, a practical, hands-on folk magician. That is what I am. I'm very down-to-earth. I'm very get-your-hands-dirty. Um, <clears throat> however, that being said, I've always had, as mentioned, a love-hate relationship with the clan of Tubal Cain tradition in the sense that I've fallen out of love with it where I've been like, no, I'm not reading anymore. It's too much. It's kind of brain blowing and mind numbing to a degree, you know, at, at the time and at the time, um, you know, I really struggled with it and I'd fall out, but then I would always find myself coming back to it out of interest and being like, wait, what if I just have one more read? <laughs> and it's so strange, but I was always like, no, I want to read more. I want to read again about that. And I'd, I'd find myself reading it and being like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> that kind of thing is like almost like a love-hate relationship. It was so, so strange. And I can't explain why I kept going back to it reading up. Um, 
And yeah, there was some really, really kind of, you know, conflicting feelings that I had towards the tradition as a whole. Now, um, the past month, I felt the incredible urge to actually read up about the Robert Cochrane tradition again, as in the clan of Tubal Cain. And I bought this book, The Star-Crossed Serpent, which is where this ties into my book review. So you do have to bear with me. But I have to be honest about this book. <clears throat> it's about 190 pages. It's less than 200 pages. It has a lovely hardback to it as well, actually, which is really lovely to see. Um, there we are. So it has a lovely hardback to it. Um, I do like a hardback book. Um, and I kind of enjoyed the front cover. There was something about the front cover that I was like, that's kind of really alluring. We've got this Jesus, this Dionysian figure, and then the horned god with this, in, you know, star, this cosmic star with this serpent around. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy this on a whim. Um, and I'm glad I did because <clears throat> I started to read this book. And I was expecting, again, to not understand it, but I don't know why, I don't know how, but I've started to understand it. Um, and it was a bit like a revelation to me. In fact, it has been a revelation to me. So I am, as I mentioned, 120% a folk magician. I'm also a practicing traditional witch. And the aspect of Godhead and divinity within traditional witchcraft is something that has always reached out to me and spoke to me. But I'm also at the same time a very practical, hands dirty, operative witchcraft, operative British folk magic. That is my bag. So it doesn't necessarily mean to indicate that I'm changing paths of folk magic or witchcraft, even though that can be fluent at times, I guess, for each and every individual person. But I finally got what Roy Bowers or Robert Cochran was talking about after so long. And in essence, to a degree, a large majority of about it was about Godhead. It was about divinity. It was about death. It was about sex. It was about life. It was Gnosticism. It was knowledge and Gnosis. And <clears throat> it's truly... To an outsider that does not know anything about witchcraft, you'll pick it up and be like, what is this? Like, I'm really struggling to understand this. And my partner is not a witch, is not a practicing witch. And was like, I was reading some stuff out and he was like, what is this? And I looked kind of crazy because I was like, I get it. <laughs> like, I actually get this. I understand this. And it was weird because Robert Cochran frequently used to talk about um, when someone finally gets the work, when they get the work and they, they get that kind of gnosis of what that's about. After 20 years of first encountering the clan of Tubal Cain, encountering Robert Cochran in terms of literature, not physically, although I would love to, I have to be honest, um, because some of their praxis and practice is to me very intriguing. Um, but you know, I always very struggle. I, I really struggled. Now, don't get me wrong, there are things in this book that I have to be honest, I do not um, not necessarily agree with, but they're not my vibe, it's not what I follow, it's not how I view spirits, it's not how I view the afterlife, things like that, it, you know, there's certain things, like, I wouldn't necessarily put salt in a work in, that's just me personally, there's all these kind of things, however, there are things in here that are absolutely, that I read, um, stunningly beautiful, um, there are some analogies here about divinity. There are talks here about Godhead, about um, group kind of experiences as well. Um, and it actually has the rituals of a tradition here. And that's what I was kind of after. I was kind of after a book that showed me certain rituals of that tradition. Now, of course, Robert Cochran in the Robert Cochran Letters does give we we snippets of some of the rituals here, but they are more, admittedly, they are more explained herein, in this book, The Star-Crossed Serpent. Now, I don't know whether or not it's because there has been rituals put in this book, I don't know, but reading this book, I have to be honest, even though the tradition is not my tradition at all, um, has been an absolute delight. 
um, there's been something magical in it of itself. And I've kind of got that. I've kind of been able to get, you know, um, finally a grasp, not only of the tradition, but some of the mind frames behind the tradition. Well, as much as what the tradition allows an outsider that isn't within the clan to understand. Um, but it's kind of, in a sense, it's kind of been magical, you know, in the sense that it has been transformative actually reading this book and there are some things in here that talks about um you know it talks about working outside and there are kind of accounts here in terms of working outside with magic and witchcraft and kind of there are things here that genuinely for me just kind of i found them beautiful and golden some of the descriptions here um, I found them really beautiful. Some of the descriptions of outdoor experiences and outdoor workings, because I went through that. I kind of understood that because I've been through something really, really similar. And it's, you know, I want to make this disclaimer. Normally, my books that I review are very much, you know, operative folk magic. This book is good for this. This has got this in it. This has got this in it. If you're expecting to find a book of spells, you're wrong. You won't find a book of spells. You will find a book of ritual. Ritualistic witchcraft, yes. However, ritualistic witchcraft, but with a good explanation into the actual tradition itself. And that is what I felt like I've kind of needed. Um, and this book, reading some of the rites and rituals, has been incredibly um, beautiful. Incredibly beautiful to read about. Um, you know, they've been really, really just lovely accounts of the tradition, you know, and, and certain aspects here of um, experiences some people make, you know, and genuinely, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure to read this book. And um, if you are after a book that talks about a tradition of witchcraft, <clears throat> I would get this book. Um, and you're wanting to know more about the Robert Cochrane tradition, perhaps maybe it's the way that this is written um, as compared to the way Cochrane wrote um, that perhaps has kind of helped me get it. I don't feel like it has been though. Um, but it talks about a lot about the tradition, but it goes more in also into Godhead, into divinity within the witch cult, into the way divinity pulsates through life death, sex, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this, I really enjoyed this book, and I kind of found myself, um, I wolfed this down, I read it like that, I read it so fast, because I was like, I was like, holy, holy hell, like, I get it, I understand some of the things they're on about, and once again, whereas if I was, you know, 21, I wouldn't have understood what they were necessarily on about. But some of these experiences I was reading, I was like, yes, like I, I know exactly what you mean. I've done that. Like I've experienced not necessarily that ritual or being within that clan, but those experiences of which they talk about. I'm like, I've experienced something so similar to that. And I could relate to some of the, some of the explanations that were used. Um, yeah. Um, and I might kind of be sounding like a mad mystic, like I've just unlocked the secrets of the universe. It's, it's nothing like that, but it's something that, for me, understanding this tradition entirely has been a journey. It's been a complete and utter journey because I've really, really struggled with it. I've really struggled with some of the stuff that Cochrane wrote. I really struggled with some of the, the explanations, the uh, Gnosticism, the kind of the symbology and the mysteries I kind of found a bit too cloak and dagger for my liking at the time. And it was kind of like, you know, just give me some practical hands down, hands in the dirt, filthy, dirty folk magic, <laughs> you know? And that's what I was after. And obviously that is that is my main practice. It is. But part of the reason why I, I call myself a British folk magician, but I also call myself a traditional witch. And part of the reason why 
I associate still with the beliefs and currents of traditional witchcraft is that I find it so, so fulfilling in terms of the aspect of divinity. There is something about traditional witchcraft and the way it interprets divinity, the way it sees Godhead um, that I find so beautiful, so um, inspiring and so connected. Um, and this tradition, the clan of Tubal Cain, had a massive, massive um, influence upon that. And yeah, I just wanted to give this book a bit of a shout out. It is not what I would normally read. Um, I know most of the people that watch my channel will probably be looking for me reviewing a book on dirty, juicy folk magic. <laughs> there is aspects here of some rituals taken from folk magic, but I would say it's more molly ritualistic. But if you're wanting to look into a tradition of witchcraft and you're look wanting to look more into the ritualistic side of witchcraft, a different tradition of witchcraft that aligns with traditional witchcraft, that had a massive impact on traditional witchcraft as a modern praxis, and you're wanting that kind of explanation when it comes to Godhead and divinity, I would recommend this book because I really, really enjoyed this book. And after years, years of kind of going through the motions with the Clan of Tubal Cain tradition, which again is no insult to the traditions or Robert Cochran or the people themselves, um, previous or current, that have kind of dominion or not necessarily dominion but take part within the clan um i have the utmost respect for you guys but it was something that i always struggled with and finally finally um after 20 years i kind of i was reading it and i was like yes and i found such relevance to it so yeah um i thought i'd recommend this book the Starcross Serpent, Evan John Jones and Sharni Oates on Volume 1, Origins, Evan John Jones, 1966-1998, The Legend of Tubal Cain. So there you are. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this book review. It's not only been a book review, it's been a bit of a log in terms of how I felt about kind of my progression as well. Um, but yeah, I like the fact that this book in, its, in and of itself has been truly magical in that respect. So um, over and out, peace.